Hello and welcome to episode 25 of the Critical Twits podcast. There's only two of us today as Colin has been locked in James's basement again. And so we're going to talk about two player games. Yay! So today we're going to be talking about two-player games, as it's just me, Brian Ennis. And me, Aaron Ravinsky. Uh, so we're going to take the opportunity. We've spent the day playing games together, haven't we, Aaron? Oh, yeah, it's been lovely. It's been quite nice, actually, genuinely. Yeah, yeah. Without your smug, insufferable sarcasm. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so quite a lot of what we cover are games for either lots of people, yeah. when we talk about tabletop role-playing games. Yeah. A bit weird if there's only two of you. You can do it. Yeah. But it's like, what do you do now? And then you stare at them. And, and they get uncomfortable yes. and go hit things. Yeah. Okay. Or one of you is like, I am Throg the Barbarian, and someone else is like, I am everybody else in the entire world. Yeah. That's that's draining. That's I quite imagine. <laughs> yeah, it's quite tricky. Um or board games, we tend to talk about board games for more people, because our gaming group, there's six of us. Six of, yeah. And the average, we can all turn up. Yeah, and the average ball game tends to work better on a sort of three to six player region anyway. Yeah, and um, when we talk about video games, obviously you can play online video games with hundreds of angry 12 year olds using yes. homophobic curse words. Yes. You can tell I'm not a fan of playing games online. No, no. Or you can play it with a handful of um, non Bowie bastards on Dark Souls. Yes, I, I love Dark Souls because nobody can talk at you. No, but there does seem to be rules and conventions in place without words that's actually really interesting it is well we might talk about that at another point. At another day yeah but so we can uh, we can move on and get right to the heart of the matter yes uh but yeah we thought we'd pick out some two player games yeah just just thinking when do you mostly end up playing two player games normally with my wife actually does that mean i've been your wife for the day you have yes you've been Substitute wife. Actually, um, I mean, I don't want to enforce heteronormative patriarchy, um, but I was making you lots of cups of tea earlier. You were, actually, yeah. <laughs> cool, I'm the dominant one. But yeah, no, yeah, two-player games tend to tend to happen with people you're very close to, so, you know, oh, I've got a boring, boring evening and telling sleep, but I just play a quick ball game. Yeah. Um, not many of them, to be fair, really work very well as a two-player game, so it's been nice to play some stuff today that has... Yeah, we're looking at, at um, we looked at three games. Yeah. Uh, so we've looked at Hive. Yes. Which is a tile-based... Chess game. Kind of like chess, yeah, sort of competitive, and it has a queen that you need to protect. Yeah. Um, and we'll get into that in a second. We also looked at Crokinole. Yes, a possibly 1870s Canadian game about flicking things. <laughs> it's a flick em up Yes. But not flick em up, the game flick em up. No. But it, it, it involves flicking. flicking. Yes. Yes, so it's a lot of flicking discs. Yes. You need to flick your discs off. <laughs> <laughs> and we have also played Aeronauts, yes. which is a two player card game. Yeah. Um, where you do battle in steampunk airships with what appears to be the cast of Red Wall. Yes. Um, so that's kind of what's coming up. Uh, so Hive then. Yes. You've played a bit more Hive than me. Yeah, I played it at the convention it was launched at. That was the Board Game Expo last year. Yes. Yeah, so the UK Go- uh, Games Expo. I think it was when it was launched anyway. I seem um, to recall it being a big thing there. Yes, they had a whole section to it and stuff, and the guy led us through it. Played yeah. a couple of games with uh, our friend Rob, who was in the Malifaux tournament with us, who's yeah. very big on these kind of... Uh, Chess like games, yeah. yeah. He's really into the old, the old ones and stuff as well. He's very good at them. Yeah. Oh, um, what's it called? Knefa Taffel. Yes. Can, is, have I said that right? I think so. Yeah. Can, 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 is it a cur? Is it a Knefa 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 Taffel, can, Yeah. Yeah. Which, which is like a Viking chess. Yes. I think with, I played that with him at uh, the UK yeah. Games Expo again. They had a section yeah. He, on the old ones. he bought one of those. Yeah. He's when we did our puzzle game. Uh, podcast episode 18 yeah. I'm going to say off the top of my head probably yeah. wrong uh, maybe 17 maybe 19 it's a number um, <laughs> it's a late teenager so it's quite a grumpy podcast yeah um, <laughs> sleeps in <laughs> sorry I was 
anthropomorphising my, my podcast. Yeah. Well. That's bad, isn't it? No, that's quite good. Um, Real life of their own. We often sell themselves. Um, when we talked about Dimensions, for instance, yes. which is a ball stacking game where you stack balls on balls. <laughs> Still funny. Balls. <laughs> um, that was... He's the one that bought two copies of that so yeah. more th- lots of people could play and got yeah. really excited he loves those kinds of things yeah he does yeah and how did you find playing that with him as a kind of a first thing I find <laughs> yeah or, or whatever that Viking name is I don't love Viking words normally I can't pronounce this one though um, playing that with him it took me right to the end of the game to get a grasp of what any kind of tactics and stuff was going on yeah yeah completely trounced me on it Hive was I don't know if it's because it's played in a slightly more three dimensional fashion. Yeah. But I grasped the concept of how all the little rules worked. If it plays again very much like chess each piece does a slightly different move set. And it was lovely. It yeah. flowed and it was nice back and forth and I felt like I understood where I was going right or wrong at all times. Yeah. I mean Hive it's the first time I played this today. The concept of Hive then yes. is that between you and your opponent you are going to build a hive. Yeah. Um, of different insects. You each have a queen bee that you must protect. Yeah. So you must protect the queen bee. Uh, One of you's got black tiles, one of you've got white tiles. They're all hexagonal. So as you build the hive, it looks like a bee's hive. Yeah, it does, yeah. Um, But the queen bee is the only bee. There's other insects instead. Yes. All of which have different abilities, different moves. You start off by setting down... You each take turns to alternate putting things down. Yep. You can't place one of your insects next to an opponent's piece. So they kind of spring up on your side. Yep. And they can't do any of their moves until the queen bee is placed. Uh, Up to or including the fourth turn. Yeah. So you could put your queen bee down straight away, but then she's really exposed. If you save it to last, then she's going to come in last. So your opponent knows on that turn. So there's a little bit of tactic straight away. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the idea is to surround the opponent's queen bee completely, so yeah. on all six sides. Yeah. Either colour, yours or your opponent's, yeah. as long as they're surrounded and can't move. At which point, presumably, she suffocates? Well, I don't, well I'd like, not like to think of it like that, but yes, probably. As a staunch anti royalist, suffocate the queen, death <laughs> to queens. No, that sounds really terrible. <laughs> <laughs> you were right when you compared it to chess. Yes. Um, it's different. You don't have a set start. Or a set board as such. No, the board kind of is the shape of the pieces. Yeah. You are never allowed to break the hive, as it turns out. So if at any point you're going to move a piece that's going to make you two separate hives, that's invalid. So you've yeah. always got attachment. Yeah. There's always a flow going. Yeah, and you've got different pieces that can move. So you've got the ants yep. that can move really really quickly anywhere that they can slide to around the edge yeah and they can tuck in as long as they fit yeah you've got grasshoppers yeah that can jump over lines as long as they jump over at least one thing yeah and they can land in the middle of things yes uh, which is quite good because quite often what you're trying to do is block off so people can't move the last piece to surround your queen for instance yeah Uh, you've got spiders that always move three yeah slide three can't double back on themselves. I think of them analoguing to chess. They, to, in my mind, they're knights. A little bit, or I always think... Of, I thought it was feeling a little bit like the uh, bishops, actually. Limited moves. They have to move in a particular format. Quite. Yeah, it's just the fact they've got a set number of squares, yeah, which, to my like mind... Combine the two, I suppose. Because obviously the bishop is being fairly useless. I like really... the bishop. I, I... Oh, we can move in a big straight line. OK, cool. That's really awkward. But it goes sideways and forward at the same time. Yeah, yeah. But no, yeah. I see we come from the... Uh, the knight the horsey Jesus <laughs> yeah the horsey <laughs> um, so yeah when the horsey takes the big lady with the hat um, no um, uh, yeah you've got that you've, you've got, got the uh, beetle the beetle the beetle is my favourite piece this is the thing that makes this game a little bit yeah, different it, yeah. anyway because um, it's all very flat at that point isn't it everyone's sort of spread out yes but the beetle can stack on top of other tiles, yes. including other beetles. So you can have a beetle yeah. on a beetle on a beetle. Yeah, so the beetle only moves one space a turn, so they're quite slow. Yeah, but yeah. they can climb, which none of the other ones can do. Yeah. Once they're on top of another piece, the piece underneath cannot move. And it counts as a piece of your colour. Yes. So you can climb on top of the enemy's piece, that stack becomes your colour, and then you can start laying next to that, which is quite nice. Yes. 
which is something I forgot because I should have beaten you in the very first game because I had my beetle on top of your queen, yep. pinning her in place, and it should have been white. I should have just been able to tap one in straight away at the end and one. Yes. Didn't think. No, because it was very new. Yeah, it's a new tactic and things like that. I don't. I think we underutilised the beetle a little bit in the, yes. in the games. Yeah, definitely. Um, but it suddenly becomes 3D, so you've got the game, and then you've got beetles crawling around on top. Yes. Kind of like, in my mind, it then suddenly becomes like a big mound or a big hive or a big anthill-esque thing. Yes. It's suddenly, it's more than just a flat 2D representation. Yes, yeah. And, yeah, we played four or five games? Yeah, I think so. Fairly quickly, actually. They can... 10 to 20 minutes each yeah I won none yeah um, but I felt they were close yes every single game it was a turn or two away from going the wrong way for me yeah or I'd have to disengage my tactics and then def- think defensively for a couple of turns yeah the game itself I'll just give you a, an audio representation of the game dominoes they feel like dominoes they're the yeah. same kind of Weighted plastic, I assume. I don't know what it dominates. It's me. Quite, it used to be ivory, didn't it? So it's obviously yeah. some analog of that. Yeah, they, they've got a nice heft to them, a nice weight to them. Yes. And the game itself kind of folds down into a bag. Yes. Which, which is quite nice. It's actually quite portable. It's the kind of thing you could chuck in a backpack or a large handbag or in your glove box or your boot. Yes. In case you're at a loose end. Yeah, I, I find myself warming towards those sort of games a lot more recently is yeah. if we're setting up some of the bigger board games I mean I'm going to use this as an example because it's the one we resent for taking so long Twilight Imperium oh that took a long time it to set up takes an age to set up even playing something like Dead of Winter can yes. take t- upwards of 10 minutes to set up yeah. which is not a long time in the grand scheme of things well, but is 10 minutes sitting around board yeah this is you tip all the pieces out onto the table yeah. you separate them into different colours and then you can play yeah it's something you could play on a lunch break. I yes, could bring that to uni- university with me and go, oh, do you want to play a quick game? Boom, I'm done. And yeah. I've still got plenty of time to eat. Yeah. yeah. And it's simple enough because it sort of copies chess in a way. It's, an, it's a nice analogue for people to go, oh, OK, I can understand how yeah. it works. OK, this one can move this far in their mind. It's like a knight or a bishop. It, yeah. It, people, people have a not instinctive understanding, but a cultural understanding of games like chess. Yeah. It's the kind of thing that... It's the same Everyone way Everyone is aware of Yeah it's the same way Mysterium works quite nicely Because Cluedo's a very nice analog To tell some it of the pieces It gives you work. something That exists in your brain Already to pin the ideas to Yes Which is nice But it's built upon the idea In a clever and unique New way Yeah So it feels like You're playing a different game Definitely um, And that's uh, That's quite nice um, The pieces I said they're, they're nice They are solid There's a heft to them yep. They click nicely When oh, you push yeah, them together I know it's the, the game itself really The gameplay And the Conversation Or The interaction It engenders Is the key part of games Of course Yeah But Something that feels nice or The physicality nice. The or, The order um, That's the reason Why these sort of things uh, They've got a, ga- a version of it On the 360 And uh, iPhone And app versions Of it And stuff like that I wouldn't Really be tempted to play that because though that just feels that clunk as you put that piece in that yeah wins you the game. There's a nice feeling to that. Yeah, like sliding it across the table and you yeah click it into place. And you're like get out of that one. Yeah, um, yeah, it's it's nice. Um, it's got high production values. The bag is a little odd, but I think it's because it's been sat in that box for ages. I think I just need to straighten it out a little bit. Yeah. I don't think it's actually the uh, the bag's fault. No, I won't vic- victim blame the poor thing. Um, <laughs> but it's a, uh, it, it still looks nice. But the you pieces can... are lovely, and it's I can hold that in my hand. Yeah, it's a bit big. I've got little hands. Yeah, ease of ease of picking up the rules, Aaron. Simple as anything. I played it quickly at a convention, which is never the best place to learn rules. I yeah. had a quick flick through it. Went, yeah, does this, 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 and this? Cool. Yeah, yeah the, the rules come to. I mean, if I unfold them, they fold up nicely to fit in the bag. Really, if I unfold them, they are printed on a single piece of A4, maybe slightly longer, but a bit shorter. So that A4, now it's double-sided, uh, but half of that is three quarters of the back page is advert. adverts so for their different variants. And the expansions, which I quite, I actually, I already want to pick up the expansions because yeah, yeah. I'm like, 
well, what does a ladybug do? What does a mosquito do? Yeah. What does a woodlouse do? It's not a pill bug. That's not a real thing. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But yeah, no, it's lovely. Um, yeah, I'd highly recommend it to people, actually. Yeah. It's, it's not overly expensive. It's nice and quick and easy to pick up, and it's something yeah. you can play with. What kind of game will you have? What will you be doing while you're moving or your opponent's going what will the atmosphere in the room between you and your other the other person playing be like it's it's one of those games you need a fire on the background a glass or something possibly a, a pipe blow yes yeah it's that it's, it's God, it's going to sound really cocky like these massively intellectual type games it is like a bit you like think chess should be yes you will be deep in thought yes looking over at what your opponent's got left looking at their thing looking back it's not so many decisions to make that you're paralysed no no and it builds up nicely because you start with nothing on the board you each put a piece down next to each other and then you build from there yeah I still haven't found a tactic at start point yeah I know I win every I've won every game so far but I, I, I just put a piece down my, okay. my tactic was to get the ants out as quickly as possible yeah I didn't like and that. I was using the spider because I think the spider is the weakest piece yes because um, it has to move a certain amount and the sp- the ants can move as much as they like around the no, around, around it so they're a weaker version so I was using a spider as an anchor at the touching point yes and yeah. I was trying to get a couple of the ants out to yes. start I was trying to pin your queen in place as quickly as possible yes that was my yeah. plan yeah that's what it I didn't getting. work though so you shouldn't listen to me because well, that I was why I was making the grasshopper the second or third piece I put out because it can if you place it in the right place can leap over a good chunk of the board and be in a position you can start building the other you side you build the other side yeah once you've got a piece around the other side as long as you're touch, they're yeah. not touching that side you can, yeah. you've got control get a beetle on top of the queen that queen can't escape can't, queen can't escape you can then also slide the beetle off into any space next to it. So it could be like your last move yeah. will be your beetle slotting home. Yes. Um, that sounded sexy. A little bit, yeah. But also a bit grim. Kind of some dark Japanese mm. pornography. A bit like the Critical Twits. Yeah. Sexy but grim. <laughs> mm. The other, I mean, I'm just thinking just some little tips for people to help them get into it a bit a bit easier. You, If you can surround, if you can get three three sides on the queen... Again, yeah. it can't move yeah. if you've got the three sides that don't touch, so yes. they're all equally spaced. Um, and then once you've pinned their queen in place, that's it's easier to to get them. So you want to stop the other person doing that. Cause if you can move your queen, they have well, they've got a build up there, but it's not yeah. in the right place, and they have to rethink all their rejig. Yeah. And, and it only moves one space, a bit like a king in chess. It just kind of yeah, or bzz. yes. I'm trying to do a royal buzz. Buzz. Yeah, that works. Yeah, yeah. Buzz. Buzz. Yeah. So that's the kind of thing. So I actually think the tactic I instinctively employed in the first turn, just out of I can pin things in place with the beetle, yeah, was actually the right way. Quite to start. a good idea. But it seems like there's lots of different ways to yeah. to do it, and you've got uh, either two or three of each of the other pieces, depending on which ones they are. Yeah, you can win with only. Um, seven or eight pieces out on the board potentially yeah you know yeah well, and you've got a grand total of 11 each so you could go actually I really like using these and setting up this kind of move so there's potential for different approaches yeah yeah you could play a solid defence yeah and then look to sort of spring a sort of counter attack and catch them with all their pieces in the wrong place yeah you can go really aggressive you can sit a beetle on top of your queen as yeah. I did at one point then any of your stuff that came near I sat on it and then ran the queen away and it couldn't chase after her yeah. and then you had a piece completely in the wrong place Yeah. or about tricking your opponent into thinking you're moving your pieces to one place yeah. only to jump over yeah, sneak in Yeah, no, and what's it's... quite good although the the, soul, the the ants are the ones that can move they, they're the most powerful piece in the game by far but there's yeah. only three of them yeah. you can't win with only three things no you need to be thinking even I mean, theoretically, the grasshoppers and stuff, but getting those into position is quite difficult because I have to jump over things. Yeah, and your opponent can move things out of the way. And yeah. quite often, what we were looking at was that situation we mentioned where you can't break the hive, moving so that the opponent can't move their the piece they want to because they would break the hive. Yes. Um, or moving, like very quickly moving a piece next to the queen so the queen can't move away because she would break the hive Yeah. if she did so. And then do you defend that? But then you're also blocking off another side of your own queen 
or do you let them sit there in which case you're pinned in place you're in control and if they get another couple things in they can get you properly stuck forever yeah because there's no taking of pieces unlike chess no so the game escalates and it kind of there's like an early stage of setting yourself up and then it moves into kind of a mid game of where you're choosing your strategy for later yeah with what pieces you're doing and then at the end game you, you can be out of things or yeah when you're just manoeuvring I've got point. a handful of spiders because I don't like them yeah <laughs> I can see the I can see the use of them yeah because um, they can in the in the right position if you're three away from where you need to be they're great yeah and sometimes I was saving them for later positioning them three away from where I wanted them to be so yeah. I could move them in the next turn yeah I was almost using them as a carry forward for other pieces like the grasshopper and the beetle and stuff yes use it to manoeuvre that into a position that seems pointless to yeah. you that I can use another piece to yeah. bounce over. I was using them to pop down and then I could free another one eye piece because then I wasn't that, breaking the hive yes things like that so yeah really I really enjoyed hive it cost nineteen ninety nine. yeah good year good year <laughs> civilization ended yeah because it was, of yeah. the millennium bug ah, millennium bug <laughs> hive Ah, insect puns. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you think this game has legs? It has lots of them. I know you led me to that, but it's good though, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like a bee to honey. Um, Ooh. <laughs> you don't need a bee to honey, really, do you? You need a bee to pollen, and a bee produces mm. honey. But yeah, I, I think this has legs to be the kind of thing because it's fairly simple. You will take. You won't play it for a while. Then yeah. you'll take one look at the rules and you'll be like, right, I remember. Yeah. It, it is. really is. Sort yeah, of, you could spend six months away from it and still pick it up and play it. Really it's really. simple, but there's depth to it. Yeah. Because sometimes things that have got short rules or if just a couple people or very quick games tend to be... They lack the depth. Yeah. They're simple. But they fuzz out after it. Yeah. Something like chess, really, is very simple, but there's lots of depth to it. I'm yeah. not saying it's on the same level as chess. No. But, but there is definite scope there. Yeah, you could use it educationally for kids to learn about insects. You could introduce them to the different ones and give them the names yeah. and describe them. And stuff Ask them why do you think this this one does this? Yeah, because beetles do tunnel. Yes, and they Ants are sort of do, on the top. Do like a outside surrounding. Yeah, and they're quick as well, aren't yeah. they? Yeah, uh, quicker than most bugs. Uh, grasshoppers jump. Yeah, you know, there's. I know it's not not it's t- it's rocket science, tenuous, but there's a there's a little thing there. It's quite good. And also, I mean, that helps with picking up what they do because sort of spiders scuttle yeah. and then they stay still. Ants are always moving, running around, following yeah. the path. Uh, grasshoppers jump. So what does the grasshopper do in Hive? It jumps over the things in the way. Yeah. That's really easy to get your head around. Yeah. It's a nice thing of the theme and the mechanics intersecting nicely. It's a lovely synergy there. Yeah, excellent. So that's Hive then from Gen42 Limited, which is a UK company. Nice. Yeah. It's the first. I don't think I've played anything else. Stop like calling that. it a pill bug then. Stick to your roots, man. Designed by John Yiani. Yeah. So, uh, cheers, John. I enjoyed your game. Yeah, well um, You're more than welcome to my 20 quid. Yeah. <laughs> or whatever amount of it you get. Our second game that we played in our festival of gameplay. Yes. Uh, apart from, we did play some Dark Souls. Uh, yeah, we on, did. Do, uh, on Twitch. Yes. Did you Twitch? I did, I did actually. Yeah, yeah. We, we we twitched for about three hours. I'm yeah. quite worn out from all the twitching. Yes. Um, so yeah, look forward to our highlight reel, highlight reel, and our very occasional twitch play at the moment. Yes. But that will improve over summer if you like doing that. We might, if there is demand, try to twitch some board games, some RPGs, those kinds of things. Mix it up a little bit. Yes, actually, that could be quite inter- entertaining. We yeah. Could, yeah. Second game then. Croquinol. I feel like I'm pronouncing that wrong. But it's it, French. Would it be Croquinole? No, that's Spanish, isn't it? Yeah. No, Croquinol. I'm sure the guy who we spoke to who was designing the boards, um, it's a lovely Polish chap at uh, Dragon Meat, I think, when we first saw it. Yes, yeah. Um, called a Croquinol, so mm. I'm, I'm happy to accept his, his words next. He seemed like a big expert on the, yes. the whole tournament scene and things yeah. like that. So if he says that, it's what it's called. Mm. Now, this is another game that we picked up, yes. and this time I picked up, at the Board Game Expo. Yes. I'd seen it at Dragon Meat the year before, so we're looking, oh, Dragon Meat 2014. Yeah. Um, never go have Dragon Meat that old. Um, it goes off. It's bad for your digestion. You <laughs> might die. Um, <laughs> what am I saying? You um, saw it there, but we got the train to Dragon yeah. Meat because it's in London, and we're not in London. Yeah. 
and thus I didn't want to carry the board because the board is about three, three foot ish in diameter the hmm. big one not radius the little one yes yes <laughs> pi times radius squared the area of a circle yes thank you Matt <laughs> I ever want to know exactly how many square inches of cake I've eaten that particular day that'll yeah. come in really useful thanks maths yeah um, yeah no yeah and you don't <laughs> want to bring a large board like that on a train especially no, these no. boards are lovely yeah so you don't want them damaged yeah so to me it's kind of a mix between bowls and shuffleboard yes yeah yeah I'd agree with that and darts oh god it's everything isn't it oh it is yeah it's, you, like, it's like all those pub games yes yeah it's, it's, a, it's a mixture of pub games because I've put Paul in there in that mix yeah well. no it is Paul because you've got oh my or god billiards even, yeah. more likely yeah. um, this is where I now try to explain something that I could show you in a single picture yes how it works <laughs> with words the power of the words a word is worth a thousand pictures no hang on <laughs> no the, yeah, yeah. the pen is worth. mightier than the sword pen is mine in the paintbrush possibly yeah it is actually because a paintbrush would just flop under the weight of a pen it would um, yeah it's so a croaking on them <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah so you play it on a three di- foot a diameter s- circular, circular board, board uh, divided into quadrants so you've got quarter areas you'll take a quadrant opposite so you'd be sat opposite someone else yep and the idea is you've got small discs. They're like slightly thicker version of checkers pieces, yes. drafts pieces, because we're in England. Yes. So you flick these. Um, I found I wasn't really flicking. I was more gently pushing. Knocking. I think there's a tournament rule on what you, what you are allowed, allowed yeah. to do. We don't do worry about that. Although much. I can still generate quite a lot of power, and not having your thumb there makes it a lot more... Accurate. When, I, accurate but less power until you sort of develop it. Yeah. I might get a tiny dumbbell for my uh, my four fingers <laughs> and just be like, I, I'm waving my four fingers at Aaron now and he looks really worried. Yeah, it's um, You've got a target in the middle as that's pretty indented. much exactly the same size as a tiny little bit of extra room. Yeah. Um, and the aim is to flick... If you get it in the middle there, it's worth... Uh, 20 points and it's removed the, yep. the target is clear for the other person this uh, centre section is blocked by pegs as well yes so, so you've got some so, around yeah so you've got to try and flip them through the gaps in the pegs get them into the centre section and then it comes out like a target you've got the, the, the centre hole as I said 20 points then yep. 15 10, 10 5 the first person has to get it into the centre bit they don't have to get it in the middle hole but they have to get it into the centre circle within the pegs or yep. at least touching it so you can't just hide your discs away where it's really hard to get to no. and then the opponent if you manage that sorry then they stay there if not you take it off and the yeah. other person has to try and get them in the middle once yeah. someone's managed to get one into the middle which is harder than it sounds sometimes yeah there are occasions you have to hit your opponent's piece yes. even if it's not in the middle you have to hit their piece yep when you've all flicked all your things yep you're done you count up who's got the most points yep you've got a ditch around the edge so you can flick things off yeah, I quite like flicking them off. Yes, it's nice. <laughs> yeah, it is. it's a really satisfying actually because everything's wood. It's a really satisfying clunk. What I really like as well, it's a bit like you said, Paul or snooker. Yeah, you have to chalk the pieces. Yeah, on the uh, the board I bought um, from smallq.be, so small cube. Yeah, but with the dot between the U and the B. Uh, lovely people, let us play. We played quite a bit before yeah. I bought a board yeah yeah we came back twice three four times to yeah, go yeah we did there's yeah. no one here could we have another go and the guy was like yeah it's fine <laughs> have you tried doing this and it was really you know really yeah yeah uh, really nice it's like the guy at Dragon Meat was very much like oh you can do this or why don't you try these sort of tactics yeah. or you can even do it four player like this if you want yeah and... this is one that's not just for two people no. you can play four people um, but you'd be in two teams yeah well, and just alternate he did let us try a four quadrant game he said that's not really sort of tournament so if it would be an entertaining see with four different corners flicking at each other yeah one of the things that they suggest was that you just have to hit one of your opponent opposite used pieces yes and then you can smack into everyone else as well and yep. try check shots and or knock their pieces into one of your opponents and it counts because it's like a bit like billiards yeah you can if I've got to hit Aaron's blue piece my red ones if I hit my red one into my other red one and then that hits Aaron blue, blue, Aaron's blue one that counts, counts as long as it moved on the turn yeah. if not you lose both pieces yeah so it's a, a risky gambit yes it's a Cajun man on a high wire 
More puns. Sorry, Colin. <laughs> it's skill based. Yeah. But it's not the kind of skill that you're not going to spend hundreds of hours before you can actually enjoy the game at, at any level. No, I mean, if you've played Tiddlywinks, you've got a kind of grasp of the. Yeah. Just on movement. It, it's easier than, say, picking up a pool cue or a snooker cue for the first time. Yeah, because it's more natural. Yeah, you're using, rather than trying to coordinate both arms and look down the thing and think about something quite large, yeah. um, you're moving one finger. Yeah. Essentially. Yeah. And I found that the more we were playing, the better we were both doing, and we were pulling off some really good shots. Yeah, we had knock two apart and things like that, which all very nice. It had a very different feel to playing it than playing something like Hive. Yeah. It was... <sighs> More light-hearted? Is that really... Yeah, we were laughing, joking. Yeah. We were interacting more. Obviously, when you play something like Hive, you're you're interacting on the board and you might you might talk, but really there's a lot of thinking. thinking yeah. With this, it's because it's so immediate, there's not a lot of thinking to be done. No, not, not in a bad way, but, yeah, you don't necessarily need to... Well, you've got to hit that piece yeah. quite often. Uh, when you got to... Because we were both using 12 discs yeah. each... Uh, for a for a single game, once we got to the end and the board was quite full, yeah, yeah, you were starting to think, right, which one should I hit? Can I knock more or pull off? Yeah, if I hit that one, it's worth this many points. But if I ignore those two that are in a lesser section, that's worth yeah. more. Yeah, yeah, and oh bugger, I forgot that Aaron got two in the two sort of bullseyes. Yeah, so he's got forty points already. I'm not actually winning. Yeah, or do I risk hit that one in the middle and then knock it into the centre for them, which has happened? Yeah. It's one of those games with lots of variant rules as well because it's there's all sorts of different ways you could play and slight variants and different things yeah, you could it's do. Yeah, very international game. Yeah, um, and scoring, for instance, there is a Crokinole World Championships, mm. and if this thing was to take off and allow us to do so, I would go there in an instant. Yeah, that'd be brilliant. Yeah, actually, I think I'd quite enjoy doing that. It's it's niche, but it would feel like something I could actually sit there and. <laughs> join in and yeah. feel like I could actually compete a little bit mm. whereas I always feel a bit daunted with other competitions like I don't understand the meta as friend of podcast calls it a lot ah uh, friend of podcast <laughs> <laughs> hello yeah. friend of podcast you know a lot of other games have got this sort of meta which this particular you know especially with the collectible side of things like Dice Master these particular yeah. set of cards are better than those sort of set of cards yeah. so yeah, but I like playing with these ones they work yeah. whereas this I feel like okay I've got my things flick yeah I'm yeah. good at this now it's the kind of thing as well you can pull this out and within a minute people will understand what they've got to do yeah the hardest thing is sort of the rule to get things in the middle or hit your opponent's piece yeah which is still fairly straightforward once you've got your head around that everything else is fairly instinctive yeah. the closer you are to the middle the more points you score if you get it right in the centre you, you've scored a bullseye you've potted the thing you get extra points yeah it's got nice I suppose because it is quite an old game, so a lot of these are ones that are very similar and might have been based, poor things might have been based on it, for all I know. Yeah. So I don't know the history of it at all. But again, it's one of those ones that's got analogues to games that are very popular in the natural discourse of things. Yeah. So people are going to go, okay, it works like shuffleboard, it works like billiards, it works like pool. Cool. Yeah. I don't have to pick it up, which is nice. It's nice when games have that analogy. Yeah, it's, it's really easy. You're, you're saying it. <laughs> Again, it's a little bit like, if you're saying it's Canadian, curling. Yeah. Got to get the thing near the target. Yep. Um, up until I was sort of 1920, I used to play pool for a pub pool team. I had snooker lessons and went to a snooker club when I was younger. Yeah. So looking and going, if I hit that one that way, Aaron's piece is going to fly out the centre mm. circle. If I get it slightly different, it will still go out, but my bit's going to be going towards the middle. Yeah. And it's, you know, trying to get those angles. So not just knocking everything as hard as you can. It's, yeah, manoeuvring things into positions. Yeah. Yeah. And it's still satisfying just to thump one of their pieces oh, flying it and it thunks against the side of the thing. And yay! Yeah. But you don't... You can start to develop a level of skill and tactics to it as well. So it has, again, a bit of depth to it. Yeah. Um, and that might be where it's slightly tricky if one of you is much better than the other. Potentially, yeah. But it's, again, because it's a skill-based thing, you could potentially practice your targeting. Like I could with Paul. You, you learn how angles work a yeah. bit better and things like that, which can catch up on because there's a plateau for that. Whereas tactics-based games, if you've not got that kind of tactical mind, yeah, you might never catch up. 
I struggle yeah. with it. It's some tactical games occasionally, apart from the Hive, which seem to have a yeah idiot savant thing going on with that. <laughs> um, but you know, I, I can't see those moves other people can. Yeah, so my brain doesn't seem to want to function that way. It's, it's capable of learning that, but it's a lot harder. Yeah, yeah. I know you struggle with Malifaux to start with. Yeah, but now you're getting your head round it. You're getting rather good. Hmm. Whereas I tend oh, to, you. I tend to <laughs> see these things like the Beetle. I'll go, oh, the Beetle can do that, and it's really good. But I won't. My brain will go. That's what the beetle does, and it won't think of the five, ten other ways you could use the beetle. Yeah, yeah. The board itself was how much, Aaron? How much did I spend? Oh, I can't remember. It was. It was in the region 60 of to sixty to eighty pounds. It came with four sets of tokens. Yeah. So that you could, if you so desired, uh, play the doubles. Yeah. Or you got a choice of colours. Yeah. It came in a choice of woods. I went for quite a dark wood. Yeah. Um, and so I ordered some different tokens because I went for black tokens and then couldn't really see them very well. Yeah. Because um, <laughs> I'm an idiot. I don't uh, but know, they, it could be a nice stealth thing. Yeah, they had a kind of pine finish, an oak finish, and a sort of mahogany style finish. Yeah. I don't think that's exactly what they're made of. <clears throat> no. But they're very, very nice. Um, I did buy, I had to buy separately because they sold out. Um, yeah. at the Board Game Expo uh, so I ordered off their website and it arrived really quickly and it was all fine and it came with the other bits in as well that yep. I ordered um, a bag that's really nice that it fits in because it's a really odd shape and it's quite big yeah. it's now got something to protect it stops it getting dusty Yeah, stops it getting knocked about stops it getting chipped because it just keeps it sort of safe got a little pocket for all the bits on the front yeah. uh, so overall I've probably spent about £100 on it which yeah. for a, a skill based sort of very casual game might sound like a lot but it is a nice thing yeah it's, it's a high quality build gone into that yeah. it's proper wood it's not like MDF with a coating around yeah. it it's actually solid wood used yeah it has a lovely thing. finish um, yeah. to it it's nice and smooth there's actually because when you use the chalk I mean it catches oils and things in it and keeps it smooth yeah but there's there's actual things where it says right this is what you should do each year to maintain your board and to yeah. keep it on. it's the kind of thing that you could pass on almost yeah actually I think it would probably I'm going to get grandpa's crocodile board out and <laughs> why, why, is, why are my grandchildren rednecks what's, what's well, I don't happening? know obviously move to the states at some point I will get the grandpa Jack is the looking on board and I will uh, flick it to flick <laughs> did that sound French vaguely yeah I will, uh, I will play the crocodile no that didn't <laughs> where was that um I don't know, a mental asylum somewhere? Yeah, it's some kind of parallel universe where everyone has a bee stuck in their throat. Yeah. Or it's that guy in um, you know, 1950s asylums who seems to think he's Napoleon all the time and tries to put on a French accent. Oh, I'd love to be Napoleon. <laughs> I could be the Napoleon of Crokinole. You could. Yes. I'll get you a hat. I'm short enough. Oh, I would I would so wear a hat to play Crokinole. <laughs> I'm thinking that we could at some point do a little Crokinole tournament video. Yeah, yeah. I would actually quite enjoy doing that. And the most use it had was in the evening at the UK Games Expo when we would retire to the bar. Yeah. It's the kind of thing you can dump down and you can just play and you can have many beers. And still have a lot of fun. And still have a lot of fun. So I couldn't play it properly and you're still really enjoying playing it. Yeah, just giggling. It's all beer and pretzels kind of thing. And it's less dangerous to play pool because it's less likely it's going to chip off and smash them in the face. Yeah. If it does, it doesn't hurt. Drunk people much. with four foot long sticks are dangerous. Yeah. Like five foot long sticks in some cases. When we were playing it, um, some of the staff there came over, had a look, were like, what are you doing? What's going on? And I was like, yeah, it's what we're doing. We'll have a go. And they were like, yeah. no, no. But they were just being polite because it's in Britain. Yeah. Uh, if we were in an American bar, um, we'd have had 20 people round stealing it off of us and playing all night, I think. Because it's, it's, <laughs> it's so it immediate. Yeah. It's so immediate. And it sounds really nice. It's all clicky. Clicky. Yeah. Click, click, click. Again, clicky things. Maybe I'm just like... Noise. Yeah, just like I just like noise. So yeah, we picked that up. That was um, we bought that, th- or I bought that through. I bought that at the board game expo. Yep, through small Q. So S M A L L C U dot B E. Yeah, uh, really nice, really nice boards. There is a bigger version of the board as well. Yeah, um, tournament sized one. Of yeah, them. which is even bigger, which obviously makes things more difficult because the distances are greater. You've got to be more accurate. Yeah, um, yeah. I'd actually would wouldn't mind having one of those. No. Yeah. Um, taking it very seriously and getting a Napoleon hat. <laughs> 
so yeah to have a have a look out for for that it's i've not regretted the money i spent on it even if it seems like a lot to, no. to start with um because it's the kind of thing you can pull out and play with anyone yeah as long as they've got fingers yes because not everyone does no it's true yeah. well, i'm sure we can make some shoots <laughs> some versions of crokinole played with tiny sticks like really? pool cues. yeah but you can have a look you can see highlights amazing shots all sorts of stuff on youtube yeah i have watched crokinole videos it's, yeah because when i get into something my brain gets full of it for a few days and you want to watch more and then goes away and i'm like oh monkeys on unicide our third game then is a card game I picked up from Dragon Meat 2014. Yep. But we we were looking for a bit of variety for this, so we've got a thinky game. Yep. We've got a skill game, and then this is something else that's quite unique, and there's some properties of it that make it quite interesting and different, yeah. which we'll talk about in a second. Uh, it's a game called Oddball Aeronauts. It is by I can't read. Um, that's, that's <laughs> terrible isn't it uh, it's by the Maverick Muse who we met yeah. at Dragon Meat they're very lovely people they wore top hats yes uh, and by top hats I mean top hats not hats which were top ah. well they were top hats in both senses they were, yeah. they were top top hats yes <laughs> their hats were top top hats <laughs> <laughs> yeah they were lovely I mean you and Colin I think were introduced to the game and yes both walked away with a copy yeah it was quite cheap it's about £15 I think yeah it comes in a again a nice little self-contained, uh, box. self-contained box to me it's about I mean it's a bit thicker obviously but it's half the size of a piece of A5 yeah again something you could you cool. could fit that in your pocket I've seen mobile phones smaller than that yeah it's so it's easily portable uh, it comes with oh how many cards 81 cards that's a weird number of cards for it to have yeah uh, but it has 81 cards a uh, token little rule book they all fit quite nicely it's only slightly bigger really than a deck of cards and it's just got a little extra space for a token to show who has priority yeah now the concept of the game is you are trying to knock out get your opponent to discard all of their cards yes each deck of cards represents the crew or other kinds of things that could be found in the sky in the sky on an airship yeah it has a really unique aesthetic it's yeah it's very well you mentioned red wall yes at the start, which it does yeah reminds me very much of red wall or if you like the furry community it's very much like a lot of the stuff they tend to produce it looks to me it's like steampunk red wool so it's anthropomorphic animals yeah so on the cover for instance is a bunny a bunny stood on his back legs he's got his fists bound up with uh, bandages because he's spawning for a fight yeah he's got a kilt on and because he's an airship and he's a pirate he's got an eye patch on yeah and yeah it's they're cartoony but they're not simple cartoons there's a bit more detail yeah. to them oh well, yes yeah, reminds me very much of uh, the y- Yusabi Ojimbo don't know if you ever saw that or done by the same sort of people by a group of people do the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles okay sort of cartoony simple but there was some nice detail going on in the in the artwork yeah, yeah. it's it reminds me of sort of I mean it's slightly sort of pastel coloured or sepia toned yeah, very uh, typically steampunk. Yeah, yeah, children's illustrations, but then with guns. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Again, like Red Wall. <laughs> yeah, um, and it's uh, it's really cool. Um, you've got all sorts of different creatures uh, that make up your, your crew. Yeah. Um, and they're, they're balanced, so they're at different power levels. You've got a couple mercenaries that you split between, so you decide we just dealt randomly one yeah. each. Um, one of which is a giant dragon, yeah, and one is like a sky kraken thing. See? Yeah, a little bit. It's like a fox riding a, a uh, Asian dragon, a little bit. Yes, yeah. So they're quite cool. They look very good. They're quite yeah. powerful cards. Yes. And you, what is really nice about it then is that it can be played without any kind of surface. Yes. You have your deck of cards. You shuffle them. And then you turn them so you can look at the faces, so you can read the cards, which is normally you're dealing sort of randomly. Then you take the bottom three cards and flip them upside down so the backs are facing you. Yep. And they are your discard pile. And the idea is to get your opponents so all their cards are facing the other way. Yeah. If you do that, you win. You've knocked out all their crew, essentially. Yeah. You've also (laughs) got some events. 
yeah. that are generally tend to be sort of weather events. Um, this yeah. particular set is playing over what they've called the boiling sea in their world. Yeah. So it's weird weather phenomena or strange creatures like robotic hornets attacking you and yeah. things like that. It's quite cool. Yeah. And yeah, the, the gameplay is actually fairly simple. You'll look at the top three cards. Yep. Yeah. Uh, you'll resolve any events that are in there and then have a look at what's next. You've always got a choice of three. Yep. Yeah. You then whoever's got priority either won the last round or you just rock scissors and paper for it they declare whether they are going to try to out, sail yeah, so sail away um, and try and sort of get some space yep. and if they win they get to undiscard some of their cards the top discarded card becomes available again you flip it back over Yeah. they will, might try to shoot you so if they win by shooting you by using guns you, the opponent has to discard two more cards because yep. they've damaged part of their ship or that, that hurt some of their crew. Yeah, and you or you might try to board, which allows you to do a bit of damage, but also then other cards. get a little bit of space. So you recover a card, and the opponent discards an extra card. Yeah, the consequences of that are either going to make it your opponent's deck smaller, what they've got available, yep. or to make your potential pile bigger. Yeah. So there's kind of two different ways. And one of the decks in the game is generally better at sailing. Yeah. The other one is generally better at fighting. Yes. But with exceptions and things in there, which are quite nice. Yeah. Do you want to explain how a typical round goes then? So you're looking at three cards. So, yeah, you look at your top three cards. The one that is on the very top is the lead member of that cr- attack crew, in yeah. essence. Um, and you will have... Uh, next to each of the sailing can things two numbers the lead guy you use his top number that's yeah. their main thing and you can call in the other two cards if you wish to yeah. assist and they have the slightly smaller number underneath yeah it says plus one or plus two so they're added on to what you get with yeah. the other one so you declare what you're going to do and then your opponent declares which of their stats they're going to look at at assessments you then count down three, two, one, very much like rock, paper, scissors, yeah. and declare how many cards you're going to use for that turn. Yeah, so you've got your deck in one hand, and yeah. then you, you throw up the number of fingers on the other hand. Yeah. So you're using both hands, but at no point does anything need to touch a table. No. This is the kind of thing you could play in the queue to get into the convention. Yeah. It's the kind of thing you could play propping up the bar, if you were that way inclined. Yes. Um, or waiting for the bus, or anywhere... We've not got a space. You're about. Yeah. yeah. Brilliantly, yeah. Because uh, you, you declare, you add your numbers up, you just show somebody the cards to show what you've done. Yeah. Um, and then put them at the back. Yeah, so I might have said, right, I'm going to... I've won, I've got guns. Yeah. Aaron might, might say... Might, oh, I'm going to sail away. Okay, and I go... We go three, two, one, we hold up fingers. Yeah. Aaron said one, I've yeah. said two. I've got... A five plus a two, so I've got a seven. Yeah, whereas I've only got a five. And then I will go, I've won, I guns, so you now have to discard. The two cards extra. you've used always get discarded. Yeah. So you're always kind of counting down. And the way it might sound like, okay, I'll just use three cards every time, you're going to burn through your deck. Yes, you want to balance your resources. So you might use less. Yeah. Or you're trying to work out what they might do. And each of the cards, well, not all of them, but a lot of the cards have got a special trick on them. Yeah, so only the lead can use the trick. Um, but some of them range from being able to swap the top yeah, card and the bottom card. And they call and that rigging, so like on a ship. Yeah. So it's quite nice, but you're also rigging in the other sense. So it's got a pun built in, so I love it. Yeah, yeah that's brilliant. Uh, some of them might be magical, they might work better if your opponent only plays one or two cards, they've got bonuses for it. Yeah. So. You can see, you can flick through your deck at any time, so you can always flip through and see what's coming up next. So as well as trying to balance not burning your resources properly, you're yeah. also trying to balance, well, the third card in that section's got a really nice trick that I want to use. So I might use one card this turn and hope they don't cannon me or I yeah. win. Well, what you do is you declare first. So Aaron goes, right, I'm going to guns. And I go, okay, I'm going to just use up this rubbish card, yeah. let him take out the next two because the third, the, the fourth, fourth card is amazing. Yeah. Or I'll go, well, I need to make sure I beat him, so I'm going to use all three, but then that gives me... And you've got quite a lot of it's little micro-decisions to make. Yes. So don't take a long time. We've never sort of gone, well, uh, um, uh... Yeah. We've always 
everything's flowing quite quickly yeah. and the game sort of took us what about 20 minutes each to play yeah and I think what we played it says 15 minutes but we tend to take longer whenever we play any kind of game Anything than it should decision it, yeah. yeah and we were actually still making our decision quite quickly for us yes yeah. <laughs> but yeah so you're always picking and choosing whether you're going to yeah. go through everything yeah. and really win or you're going to accept losses at times or... yeah and you might have um, like you said you can rig things it might be a case that you've got magic and it gives you a bonus to certain things yeah. it might be a case that you can protect cards yeah or it will allow you to there's like a group of monkeys that are up in the rigging yes and they help you sail better but because they're controlling your sailing yeah again this is my mind trying to make the things yeah, yeah. and I think there is there without it saying a lot yeah because they're controlling your sailing everyone else can do other things but it lets you support their sailing action with guns or boarding, boarding yeah because they, they've taken over yes so your other things are still helping them but they're so good at sailing they can use that other things. people are doing other things so you've yeah. got start to get variety and a bit of uh, tactics yeah I like the fact that most of the card is the artwork yes if you think of a magic card yeah half is a picture yeah and then half is text. Yeah. This is actually the strip down the side. It's probably a quarter, maybe a third. Yeah. So it's is nice if you've got one hand, you're looking at three the, cards, you're only really holding the cards. Then. Yeah, you can actually, again, um, you can sit them next to each other and you only need to move them a sort of a third of the way across. So yeah. you can have your numbers very, very close. But the art is really nice. Yeah. The I, art is really, really pretty. Um, and they all have different names and uh, similar. So. Yeah, they've got characters and stuff. It makes me want to know if they've done kind of a like, webcomic or a series or something with that. Yeah, not that I've seem... seen, but it looks like the kind of thing you could do. Yeah. Um, quite family friendly. Yeah, there's nothing particularly vicious on there. No, though. but you've got like people we- wielding cutlasses or yeah. Gatling cannon type things. Or... Yeah, it's, it's like watching. Peter Pan it's that kind of thing for me he's like yeah they're armed but not really aggressively yeah and I think the fact they're animals kind of softens it yeah it does a little bit and the fact that anything can come back so nothing is killed because yeah. if you manoeuvre a bit they can recover yeah. so that's quite nice if you yeah. like that sort of thing I don't need everything I play to have blood and guts and violence in it no. just 95% so this is a good 5% of the other time yeah we can play this yeah uh, yeah but you can see the art and the art is I I think I fell more in love with the, the aesthetic than necessarily the actual game itself yeah it's a nice thing to have it's a nice object or collection of objects yes uh, yeah. the box looks pretty it is yeah um, it looks nice on the shelf <laughs> all diddy and wee yeah that's lovely nice and easy to pick up and um, it's very balanced yeah, every game we had, no one won by more than sort of four or five cards. Yeah. So everyone was down to quite crucial decisions. Yeah. Uh, two of our games were the last one you won. Yes. You only won because you won and you got to flip a card. Yeah. And I had to discard a card, which was my final card. Yeah. So you won by literally one card. Yeah. And it was right down to the last uh, the last bit. But there's sort of tactics and things in there, and I could see you getting again getting better at it. Yeah. I don't think it would be quite as good for people that are brand new. No, I suppose it's not, not much of a... super gamers. I think it's kind of something to get, bring out to people that are more okay with game concepts. Yeah. It have to be hardcore. It's not that difficult. But the no. rule book is sort of it's three times the length. Yeah. And when you start... concepts and things in there you need to understand. Yeah. And like you've got the, the tricks and similar and the yeah. magic system. There is a thing that we forgot about that yeah. means you can't use the magic on certain cards because they're protected and all mm. sorts of things. Yeah. On top of that, the box comes... Because you're not using 40 cards, you're using 25, I think. So there's a selection of... You've got the events, you've got the mercenaries. But yeah. you also have some extra cards that you can swap in and out of the decks to deck build. And the rules for deck building are quite complicated. Yeah. I have to say, when I looked through the cards, I didn't see anything that stood out and went, oh, I have to have this. No. But I think it's a case of small degrees making bigger changes in the focus and the way that you're going to play. Yeah, yeah. Taking lower numbers to have more tricks or getting rid of tricks in order to have just more raw numbers. Yeah. Which means you might get outmaneuvered by someone who's being clever, but you've got more brute damage, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, so, Which, yeah, so it's nice choices. they've got a bit of variety and stuff in there. But yeah. no, I see what you mean about it not being so great for introductory things. Two-player games particularly, 
you need something the other person is going to be able to pick up and play quite easily if they're not used to playing games very often because if you're explaining rules to them you're winning because they might not necessarily go well, you've already seen tactics that they can't understand because well, they don't know, know that rule yeah so the less you have to explain to them the more fun they're going to have yeah but it's game. nowhere near as complicated as say a game like Magic where every card has an exception or even yeah. I mean again we talked a couple of weeks ago Dice Masters yeah, is yeah. far more complicated yeah. in what it can do Yeah, uh, but it's nice because you can just put it out and have a game yeah. you don't even have to mess around with the deck building if you don't want to no <laughs> didn't feel it needed to to be honest and yeah off you go you can just you can just pick up playing uh, we hadn't played it for quite a while and we picked it up really, really quickly again. Yeah, okay, it did take a lot of explaining. It's not nice. the kind of thing, again, that comes out all the time. But no. I reckon if I pass this across the floor, we're podcasting on the floor today because we're not at Collins. Yeah. If I give that to Aaron, I reckon he could get his wife to play that. Yeah, I know, I reckon that too, to be honest. I think I think she would quite happily give that a go. Because she's played some other games and stuff with yeah. you. But again, she's not, she's not someone who goes, I am a gamer. Yeah. But if things get overly complicated, she gets annoyed. It's like, I'm not having fun because I'm having to concentrate too much on everything. I want to enjoy yeah. myself. There is Whereas actually... she could be clever, where she doesn't have to try and remember a million and one different rule books or double check everything. That's yeah. why she likes Carcassonne. Because. I would say Carcassonne is probably. More complicated than that. The, the Once you bring in the fields, yes, it's more complicated. <laughs> Carcassonne, again, it's quite instinctive. We were yeah. going to talk about Carcassonne, but we'll save that. Yeah, we'll do that time. We'll do a peasantry special, which we've yes. mentioned before. We're going to do Carcassonne, Settlers of Catan, all those sorts of games, and just sort yeah. of weigh up, you know, how realistically do they represent the oppressive life of a 15th century surf? Yes. Because, you know, you don't just get gaming advice uh, and humour, you get historiography. Yes. Here at the Critical Twitch. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that was Aeronauts yeah. by Maverick Muse. Um, again, not a purchase I've regretted. It's only £15. I say only £15. Obviously, your mileage may vary. Different yeah. amounts of money mean different things to different people. But it's still fairly cheap. It's not like you're spending 85 quid or something. No. That, that's a, hef- a hefty purchase for, for most people. And it gets pulled out occasionally and played. I'll say the one thing nice. you said we picked it up and I'd look at it today when yeah we don't really play this very often don't know if it's if it's that great and then we played a game but we went I don't understand why we don't play this more often this is yeah, really fun that is the first thing I said yeah. um, after the first game and then we immediately we swapped the decks over and just played with the okay. other person's deck just to see how it how it played yeah. and we only I think stopped there because well we needed time to do the podcast it's late yeah yeah it's much later than Aaron was intending yes <laughs> definitely <laughs> on which note then uh, I just thought we might round this off just because we do also discuss video games from time to time yes or every other week sometimes <laughs> <laughs> mostly because there are things you can play on your own so we can all go off and play 20 hours of Dark Souls each and then come together and have a big chunk of stuff to talk about yeah yeah whereas actually board games and things they require all of us or lots of different people yeah um so that, that's kind of why we have that focus. But with the summer coming up, all our work schedules are relieved. Yes. We're going to have a lot more time, so we're going to focus more on the things where we can get together now and actually have the time to do it, which yeah. is lovely. Absolutely lovely. Yes. I was just thinking, are there any video games you can just think of off the top of your head in a similar mould? Two-player where you'd get your friend, partner to just... You know, chuck a controller at them and say, oh, let's play a game, let's have some fun together. And they might not be, you know, they're not the kind of person that's um, normally wants to pick up into stuff. gaming culture, but will play games. Because I think most people do. Yes, most people play them at some point in time. Yeah. I mean, if you've played Bejeweled, if you've played Candy Crush, yes. and you've played a game. You're a gamer. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. No. I know a lot of people go, oh no, it's casual gaming. No, it's not casual gaming. It's, it's casual some... gaming. It has gaming in the name. Yeah. It is gaming. Just because somebody does it casually. You might do something else casually. Yeah. It doesn't really matter. Um, I don't... Does that, does that happen in other walks of life? Are you reading that book casually? You're not a real... You know, actually, actually, yeah, yeah. Oh, you only read... You only read bestsellers or you only read genre fiction. Yeah. As someone who writes genre fiction. Yeah. Um, and considers it... Not my own work, obviously, but I consider many genre yeah. works to be literature. Happens uh, films comes, as well. Script. You only watch blockbusters. Well, you don't really understand films, then, do you? Oh, I, I think well, that about films. I don't I, think I, that I, about books, but I do think that about films. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas I'll watch either 
I yeah. much more. I, I tend to appreciate more. Yeah, uh, I, I think but... as a technological medium, as an inherently technological thing. Yeah. People who play games are more technologically minded. Yeah. Um, or the people that are really into games will be more technologically minded, which means in the internet age, their voices are amplified. Yeah. As yeah, a theory. Yeah. Why are we talking about this? Yeah, no, we're talking <laughs> about, let's, let's go back to yeah, so, two-player games. I can't actually think of any at the moment. What have you been playing with your wife? I actually have been playing more adventure games. Yes. Uh, we've recently been playing King's Quest, which we've absolutely loved. The writing in that is amazing. Awesome. Um, you would love... It's fantastic. You would love that. How does... How did two people play a one-player adventure game, then? How do you play that game with your wife? I will control it. Yeah. Um, so Laura can concentrate on the story that's happening around. Because yep. There's a lot of conversations that happen. Talking. It's a very story heavy medium, isn't it? Yes, adventure game, which is nice. So it's like watching a TV show in a lot of respects. Yeah. Um, but there are decisions to be made. There are puzzles to be solved, and you can work cooperatively. Oh, try yeah. this. Say this. Oh, I think you should do that. We recently played through Grim Fandango. Okay. And I don't know if she's part of the design team, but without looking at her phone, she seemed to be able to solve every single puzzle without trying really because I found this this and this yeah it was re- it was typical there's, there's adventure game logic as it's called yes yeah and yeah. Grim Fandango is like that like having to feed the bread into the the things tube so the uh, birds distra- get distracted elsewhere so you can grab something yeah and then later on after f- some foam in there so it blows up the whole system yeah was it makes sense once you've done it but until that point there's a, why, why would you click that on there because I yeah. don't know what he's going to do with that thing in there I haven't thought about yeah. it yeah. whereas Laura went do this okay and I do this 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 and this okay cool yeah. solved and she, yeah just, just completely understood exactly how awesome yeah. yeah so that's one thing that you can do yeah to get your uh, to, to share the gaming love we've done some videos on Broforce yes yeah. and that quite simple has only has a couple buttons yeah I did play that with a friend of mine who's She's quite into gaming, but not yeah. massively. And uh, her other half, who he prefers more strategic puzzle PC type games generally. Yeah. Absolutely loved it. it Pass back and forth with the controller because it's quick and it's silly and it's yes, yeah, simple. You don't have to spend ages explaining how the yeah. game works. And, and if you die and you mess up, you just go back. Yeah, it's kind of people don't like that. You are punished. Now you must quest to get your experience back. Yeah, your souls back or whatever. Yeah, quite a lot. Of things I've played with my other half would be retro games. Yeah, because she played those more as a kid, so they kind of fit in with her yeah. memories. But something like Streets of Rage, yes. you're both on the screen at the same time. Yeah, and there are three buttons. There is Summon Bazooka Man. There is yeah. Jump, and there is Kick. Yeah, and then you move around. Yeah, a There's lot of games. To that. Yeah, I mean, if you think of a Mega Drive controller, a D-pad and three buttons and a start. Yeah. If you look, look at a PS4 controller, you've got two sticks and a D-pad, yeah. four triggers on the back, four face buttons, a share button, a start button, and what Colin refers to as the clitoris that yeah. you have to rub, tickle, and click uh, yeah. in order to get it to do things. Yeah. It's much more intimidating than to give someone that same controller and say, you only need these three buttons. Yeah, I actually... we I picked up Diablo 3. Yeah. Uh, because I thought I'd be a nice cop thing for uh, my wife to play with me. Yeah. And she was like, "This is too many buttons. This is too much going on. I just want a." She like she loves Street Rage. We played that for we we played that through recently. After yeah, we, we did we did it for the channel. Could, could we ever go? Because I like that. Oh, cool! Yeah. She's really good at it. Yeah, but because she can concentrate, she doesn't have to worry about yeah. being finger dexterous. There is a certain instinctual finger dexterity yeah. from playing games for a long time that somebody who doesn't play games all the time needs to learn. Yeah, it's difficult. Yeah, if you think of something like Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah, you had move and you had jump. Yeah, and you could the other person could be tails, so they don't even need to be the person who it depends on. They can help you out and be yeah. your buddy, but not be fully responsible for the game. Yeah, games that hark back to that time, that sort of simple, simplistic gameplay. A lot of the indie games. Yeah, um, although it's not two player as such, um, I would happily throw someone who's not super, who's interested but not a super competitive game. Something like Super Meat Boy. Yeah, you mean sod. <laughs> it's hard, but yeah, no, yeah. something you quickly you can quickly pick up and understand how it works and stuff. And it's yeah, you've got you've board. got a jump and a run and a move, yeah. um, but there's still depth there, and it's a it's a good game. I spent hundreds of hours yeah. on Super Meat Boy. No, it's it's amazing. Oh, I need to go back and actually finish everything. I want to hundred percent that so bad. <laughs> um, I played Braid. Yes, when yes. it first came out, and my other half who's not super into games as I said 
um, got obsessed with Braid. Yeah. And played it to the point of completing it before I did, and then played it again and completed it again. Yeah. And has a tattoo because she loves the game so much. She has a Braid tattoo. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and just fell it uh, because again, run. It's got move and jump. Yeah. And everything else is kind of instinctive. Oh, and reverse time, which you can't get. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So. You know those kind of things, and I'd quite happily sit and watch her do that, and yeah. tut and sigh when she died, and then go, "Why on earth did you solve that? Doing it that way? What's going on? Yeah, Why yeah. didn't I think of that <laughs> that quickly?" So that was two player games. Yes. If you've got any other two player games, next time Colin is locked up, we can try some other games. There were yeah. some others we did see that we might we might have a go at. As yeah, well, yeah. But... Somebody's mentioned a form of Agricola to me, which has got there's a two player variant. Oh, okay. Which is amazing. It's built specifically for two players. Okay. Uh, a more complicated thing. We looked at Ket, which is not a drug. It's got an H <laughs> in it. Uh, hey, that, sounds, that sounds worse. Yes. A drug with H in it. Um, <laughs> Ket laser chess. Yes. Essentially. Looked really, really interesting. Yeah, it was weird, but very cool. Uh, Pandemic, we spoke about because that's got a, that works quite well as a two player. Yeah, there's, there's a few, few there's out a there. few other ones. So what we'll do is we'll let you, our viewers, guide us. If there's other games you'd recommend that we play, that we try out two player, um, or if you have a different angle on games and you're not sure how to get in, so it could be uh, things to get people started. Yes, um, games to games that take up an entire game evening yeah games that you can play in 20 minutes if you've got anything like that you'd like us to tackle then we will venture forth we'll do our research we'll play lots of games oh so hard doing this job <laughs> uh, and then we will uh, we'll get back to you so just let us know yeah. you can find us on SoundCloud where you can download the podcast yeah you can find us on YouTube where you can look at Aaron's silly pictures that he does for us Yay. and have that running quite smoothly and nicely yeah uh, in the background uh, you can find us on Twitter where occasionally we try to be funny yes and you can find us in the crisp aisle of Tesco's about half past six every Friday night yes uh, buying snacks for our gaming sessions so you know uh, we'll meet you there the password is there are many unusual types of squirrel and if you do so we will give you a secret prize so thank you very much I've been Brian Ennis I've been Aaron Vinsky and I still am Brian Ennis in actual fact yeah because we say that every week but it sounds like we're shedding our identities like uh, the crusty outer coating of a snake yeah we, we foolishly didn't take on internet personas no whoops thank you very much uh, please get in contact if you like what we do then click the like button that's what it's for yep. otherwise we don't know yeah uh, if you want to see more of what we do or listen to more of what we do uh, you can click the subscribe button and then it'll tell you yeah it's quite nice isn't it it's handy the wonders of modern technology <laughs> Remember the days when you just used to have to hope that interesting things would just sort of arrive somehow at some some yes. time. And you can share things, uh, because if you share things that are fun and interesting with other people, they will think you are a sexy cool person, and they will like you more. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's just how modern yeah, it's very true. social interactions work. Yeah, I've had to beat off the friend requests. Yeah, uh, so sharing things. Yeah, if you wanna if you wanna beat off a load of people, then share share what we do. I really need to help my words. <laughs> Luckily, I'm not the kind of person to seize on that kind of double meaning <laughs> of a word. So, thank you very much. Uh, podcast every Tuesday, uh, gaming videos and other pieces as and when. Generally, yeah. something else every week. Yeah. So, thank you very much. We'll see you next time. Goodbye. Bye.